Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Simple Python. Into this video, we are going to program and run a simulation of the game of life. A little background first. The game of life is a cellular automaton created by mathematician John Conway. This means that we are going to create a grid world on which each cell will represent a cell of life, and it can be either dead or alive. The rules for that are very simple. Any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies, as if by underpopulation. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation. Any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies, as if by overpopulation. Any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell, as if by reproduction. Let's take a closer look at our final program. This is the final GUI, and as I said before, it is a grid world where each box or cell has a binary status, dead or alive. With orange, we represent all the live cells, and with white, all the inactive ones. Now let us break the visual down to see what elements we have to program. First, we need a window where our program will be displayed. Also, we want to give the users the ability to choose their one grid size. Notice we have deactivated the resize option, as this will break the grid. Next is the grid itself. We have to program a logic to visualize this kind of statuses, dead slash alive. We add three buttons to help us operate the program, and also it make it look more like a real application. Finally, a slider to choose the speed, or better say the refresh rate, of each generation. Now let us jump to my PC and start programming the game. We import the libraries and start writing the class. We use a class as it will help us create reusable code and gives to the program a better structure. Each class start with an init method and as the name suggests, initializes the class object we have created. We define the rows, the columns, and the size of the cells in the grid. We have also to define the speed of the game. We create the window, add a title, deactivate the resizing, and define the background color. We create the buttons, the label, and the grid by calling the functions we will define later. Here we will define the function to create the buttons and the slider. First the start button, we define the text and the command. Note the command is the function run that we will define later. Next the stop button, same as before, but as command we use the destroy function of the window to close the program. Next the reset button. And then the slider. We pack the buttons and the slider. We need to create a label to display the generations of the game. And also update the label each time the generation changes. Here, we use the config method to change the text of the label. Next, we create a grid to store the state of each cell. We will use a list of lists to store the state of each cell. One means the cell is alive and zero means the cell is dead. This method will create a grid with random cells alive or dead, and it is called when the game starts and when the reset button is clicked. Now that we have a grid, we need to draw it on the canvas. We will use the create underscore rectangle method to draw each cell. The fill parameter will be set to orange if the cell is alive and white if the cell is dead. Into the loop, we calculate the x and i coordinates of the cell by multiplying the row and column by the cell size. Next follows the update method. This method will be called every time the game needs to update. It will calculate the new state of each cell and then draw the grid again. Notice that his method is recursive. It will call itself till the stop button is clicked. Each time calculates a new state for the grid, it will increase the generation by one and update the label. Now for the final methods before we can test our program. This helper function is used to get the new state of a cell, given its row and column based on the rules of the game. It calculates the number of neighbors the cell has and returns the new state of the cell. To calculate the number of neighbors a cell has, we need to check the cells in the eight surrounding positions. This helper function is used from the previous function to get the number of neighbors a cell has. We loop through the eight surrounding positions and check if the cell is alive or dead. If it is alive, we increment the num underscore neighbors variable. We also need to check if the cell is on the edge of the grid. 
The start function is used to start the game and just calls the update function. The reset function is used to reset the grid to a random state and can be called from the reset button. To change the speed of the game, we just need to change the speed variable and call the update function again. Finally, we create an instance of the Game of Life class and pass in the number of rows, columns, and the size of each cell. Finally, we can run our program. We hit the start button and let the fate decide the state of each cell. We see the cells changing state in each generation. After some hundreds of iterations, we will reach a state of balance where we will have specific shapes that studied from different amount of people and the documentation of the game can provide more information about it. Also notice that the cells that remain alive are either stable or they oscillate. We can use our buttons to either close or restart the game and our slider to change the game refresh rate. I had a lot of fun creating this project and I hope you find it interesting also. Visit my GitHub account to see the whole code and also see more information about the game of life. Hit a like if you learned something and subscribe to see more interesting projects.